All right, guys, thanks so much for being patient. A I, I, I special thanks to Avidine and RC Island and uh, all the guys, vendors around us. I know we're clogging the aisles, but we're only gonna be about 12 minutes, so thank you for being patient with the people in the aisles. And, and guys, thanks here for being here for unveiling. Oshkosh, for us, is where we always want to unveil the new products. Um, we're seven years now in business. I never would imagine that we'd be at 36 unique products made right here in America already. And we want to keep that tradition, at least two or three new products every year. You'll notice that we're starting to rebrand the company Best Aviation Products, as opposed to just Best Tugs. Best Tugs is a product within the Best Aviation Products brand. So expect to see a lot more things that aren't just Tugs coming from your best tugs, Patey family. So um, the first thing I want to start with is an addition to a product line you've seen before, then we'll move up to something you haven't seen at all yet. But the first thing is we have a new floor scrubber. Our hanger scrubbers, the floor scrubbers, we built them just for hangers. The brushes are designed to not damage hanger polished floors. We use a lithium, or not a lithium, but a sealed gel battery instead of a wet battery because all the other scrubbers are using wet batteries. When the batteries go bad, and all batteries, including ours, will go bad, if they're a wet battery, they boil over and they ruin your painted floor. And painted floors are way more money than our most expensive scrubber. So we use a sealed battery. Uh, we have longer battery capacity because we know people want to do an entire hanger floor and not have to recharge. We have larger tanks than our competitors because you don't want to have to drain your muddy water and put fresh water in twice, you just want one stop. We added lights to our scrubbers that nobody's done before because if you polished a, a, or cleaned a hanger floor, you get that, if you don't have lights, you always end up with, when you're finally done, one two inch strip of dirty floor that when the light hits you, you're like, gosh dang it, I gotta fire this all up and go again. So we lit them up. There's 23 unique things about our scrubbers that makes it live up to the best brand. And we know when we say best, that's painting a target on your back, right? If you say best, anytime you use a superlative, everyone's gunning for you. But we really try to make sure we live up to the brand and we did with our scrubbers. We had no idea how popular they'd be. We certainly didn't imagine the really big FBOs and centers would want our scrubbers. We thought it would be owner operators. The big shops have really big floors. We now have our newest 32 inch scrubber. It'll do 120,000 square feet on one charge. This one is built with all the sides cut open so you can see all the things that make it unique and different and we can showcase the tanks and the water and I'm not going to give a big demo on that but you'll see our best scrubber booth right there and you can go over there and see everything that makes best scrubbers live up to the brand so that's our newest product it's about twice the size of the first one so we now have three we can't go any bigger than that until we go on something that you ride on so wink wink nod nod um, all right, so the next thing I want to introduce, we've had such success with our Bravo product line. And at Best Tugs, the Bravo product line was the very first product we came out with. And the very first of the Bravo product was our Bravo B5, meaning it can haul 5,000 pounds. We then came out with the B8, which was 8,000 pounds, a B12. We now haul all the way up to a B24, 24,000 pounds. And then we start having people say, man, I need something that's less money. I want a best tug, but I can't afford a Bravo. And so we came out with our Alpha tugs, which you'll see them around. I've got one hiding under here, but I'm not gonna show it to you until later, because it's got a new cool attachment on it. But the Alphas came out, and we came out with an Alpha, and then an Alpha 2, and an Alpha 3. They move more weight, have higher speed. And that became our second best seller. So the B5 is still our number one selling tug, but the Alpha A3 is our number two. The challenge is there's a $3,000 price difference between those two pieces of equipment. And you have everybody saying, I want a Bravo because a loaded style tug is easier to maneuver. It's way easier to steer in tight spaces. And as soon as you put the nose wheel weight of an aircraft right on top of your traction tires, you have way more traction. So ice, snow, grass, gravel, a Bravo superior in every way, um, but the Alpha was more affordable. So what we wanted to do was say, let's build a loaded style tug as opposed to the Alpha's dragger. And, and, and I know I use terminology if, you, if you're not familiar. A dragger tug is any tug that clamps and drags, but it relies on you to push down for traction. They're not as easy to maneuver. 
but they are more affordable. So this here is our brand new Bravo B4. It's, it's an Alpha A3 to B5 hooked up. And it shares a lot of the components of the Alpha that keep our costs down. But it's a loaded style tug. And so it's our most affordable loaded style tug. It'll move 4,000 pounds. You'll see the handle up here, the, the throttles, forward reverse on your thumb throttle, and your high low range, your power switch, your light, shares the same components as our Alpha tugs. But the quick lock forks for grabbing aircraft with wheel pants and our wheel chalk is all the same components as our Bravo tugs. It still has a full transaxle and differential. We didn't shortcut where, where other companies will just put a, a pipe and a sprocket and it's hard to steer. We still have a transmission, we still have a transaxle. It still has the best touch digital controllers, auto throttles, traction control, anti-lock brakes. It's all still in there. The auto park is still in there when you let off the throttle and it brings your airplane to a stop and locks the brakes for you. All that's still there like a Bravo, just a bit more affordable. So that B4 right there is the solution to people that want the B5 but can afford the Alpha. This is right smack dab in the middle and we are really, really excited about it. Yeah, thank you. Now as long as everyone doesn't buy that instead of the B5, we still want to sell these. <laughs> so there's that. Um, a new feature that I, I want to touch on for a second that isn't available on the uh, Bravo B4, but all of our B5 and larger have a kick and stow handle. There's a button here on the side, and you just, no bending down or pulling a pin, or our competitors have no options. It's just bolted and permanent. But ours, you can, you can kick that button and lift the handle straight up and close your hangar door without unloading your aircraft. For me on my Pilatus, I use this uh, Bravo B12. When I kick that handle and stow it, it's underneath the spinner. I can close my hangar door two inches off the nose cone of my Pilatus and with the tug still attached. So this is a really nice feature if convenience is important to you. The kick and stow handle is now standard on all Bravos above the B4. Okay, so let's go to something smaller again for a neat little accessory. This is a new addition for customers that already have one of our Alpha tugs. This is a trailer attachment and it's only a few hundred bucks. So if you have a fuel cart in your hangar, a small boat, it's amazing where you can get a trailer if you don't have a vehicle attached to it. So this here will bolt onto any Alpha. The pivot pin that lets the front end of the Alpha pivot is replaced with this, and that permanently stays on there. You can leave your aircraft attachment bars on there and that and never change it. And it comes with a quick change ball, because for me, lifestyle is about convenience. So this is a 2 and 5 sixteenths ball. I can push that button, that ball comes off, you put on your 2 inch or your 1 and 7 eighths and they all come with it. So that's a neat accessory that someone could go home with today if they've got an alpha, you just, there you go. So the next thing, this is kind of a, for me this is exciting. Last year we unveiled that orange box on the shelf behind you. It's the best power supply and it was the first of our best power products. The thing that made the best power product is a continuous power supply different than our competition is we really knew that most hangers only have 110 outlets. They don't have three phase power. You're really limited on how much power you can pull out of the wall before you trip a breaker. But when we're doing gear swings, we need more power than what we're gonna get out of that. So our power supplies, we launched them with super capacitors in them. So as soon as you plug it in, it charges up internal batteries. So if you need to cycle the gear and momentarily take more power than your hanger breaker can handle, it will let you draw down those supercapacitors and when you're done, they come back up. So it'll let you have twice the output for 10 seconds as opposed to just plugged into the wall. And that was a, a big thing for this industry. Also, it's pure uh, power. It's a clean power, which is more expensive, but it's important for avionics to know there's no spikes in the system, no matter what switches you're playing in your airplane, or if you're doing diagnostics and, heaven forbid, short out a wire and send a spike, that thing's going to keep all the power clean. It's not going to send any feedback. So that's a, a, a really unique thing. But as we started selling, a lot of those people say, I want to start planes, not just update my avionics. So this is our new start pack. The case may look familiar and uh, to you because you'll see it at, at stores. We got that case from Milwaukee and then we put all our guts in it. So this 
is a portable power supply. It's full of batteries, and we can go up to, we have several versions of, of it, 3,600 amps for starting. So go start your big jet. And you don't have to plug it into the wall. You just roll it out. But what's unique about it, it's not just that we put all that power in there, but we give you 12 volt and 24 volt, and your display right here always lit. And I think the best part, and arguably the most important part for a power supply and new to this industry, is it's Bluetooth to our app. So when you're in your airplane and you're plugged into the car, you just put your phone up, and when you hit start, you see the amp draw out of that box, not just what the plane's taking from your airplane battery combined with that. You know exactly what that's doing. I just barely put a new Papa motor in my Pilatus, went from the Bravo to the larger Papa, which is on the new NGs. And when we started doing all the tests with that, we're starting off of this pack. I had my app up and it's tracking every start as they're doing the setup. Well, what happened is we started seeing that the starts were getting a little too high attempts, even though we had all the power. But because I'm looking at the app, I'm like, the batteries have the power, it's the starters not pulling it. And so all of a sudden, instead of replacing a $25,000 lithium battery on the Pilatus, we're looking at a starter generator. And that's where we found the problem. And so saved me $25,000 because I have an app that I can look and watch all the start cycles in real time and record it and have it in your log in case you want to know. And that data matters, especially in aviation and in finding problems. So this is Bluetooth enabled. It's completely waterproof. Some people, my kids are like, Dad, you designed the whole thing in a nice new steel box, but then you went to Milwaukee and, and got this box. And I said, look, the steel box was $82, powder coated, done, bent, everything, but they dent easy, they rust, they wear out. This is stronger, waterproof. Yes, it costs 300 bucks instead of the bent metal, but this is a far better solution. But packed inside there is your jump start cables that can handle all the amps plugs into the front there, and then we did something else that's different from our competitors. Our charge controller, there's a plug on the side here, but the charge controller is individually charging the batteries. Because if your batteries get out of balance, you replace very expensive batteries real fast. So it doesn't just charge all the batteries as a set. Each set of batteries has its own look and its own charge. So once fully charged, it turns off and it keeps charging the low batteries. So that's another thing that makes us superior. The only challenge with these packs, though, is some aircraft like the Pilatus um, is finicky. TBMs are really finicky. They want a very particular power output. And with a battery, you're kind of like, how charged is it? Is it charged enough to accept the circuit or discharged enough to accept the circuit on a Premier jet? If you're at 28.9 volts, it won't connect. At 28.8 volts, it will connect. And so we say, well, how can we manage that? Well, what we did is took what's in our orange box, our best power supply, came out with our new and improved power supply. It's right here. This gives us a amp readout on the side of the box. So you can see how much power you're putting out. But this is continuous power, meaning you plug it into the wall, plug in, run your avionics forever. It's great, it's portable. The jump start cables are stored in there. But the other thing we did is, you'll see there's some recessed contactors on there. So I'll just plug this on. Now that's logged in, and now you have the continuous power supply and this cold cranking app's batteries, and on the side of this box is a little silver button, and if I touch the button, it connects those massive contactors from this one to this one, so I have the right voltage and the high cranking amps, but I'm still only plugged into a 110 power outlet. So now you get easy connection with all your aircraft, with clean power, a more continuous supply, and there's a challenge with that, that that we tried to, I don't want to get too into the weeds, I'm an engineer, I want you guys to understand everything we did. But one of the challenges, if you put a continuous power onto a battery pack and you just plug it in and leave it there, you'll overcharge the batteries because a charge controller throttles down, right? A continuous power stays full bore to keep 28.5 volts all the time. So when you do the bus tie, you push this button, there's a microcomputer in there and it only ties it for one hour. So you can't possibly overcharge these batteries. So if you're going to do a start, hit the bus tie, you've got an hour to hit start on your airplane, which is all the time in the world, and you don't risk the damaging the battery. So the nice thing about that, that thing's locked in. You probably heard it click. This handle pulls up, 
and it rolls away as a set. Or if you just don't need the whole set, you just grab this, throw it in your car, go to your buddy's hangar and help them out with their thing. So that's our newest Bluetooth enabled best power product and we're really quite proud of it. Thank you. Okay, so the smallest, but I think one of the simplest ideas we came up with, um, and I'm, I'm really excited about this one, especially because it was a collaboration with insurance companies. When we came out with our tugs, we really went after auto throttles and torque sensing so we could monitor the loads we're putting on aircraft nose gear, not damaging nose gears and causing nose gear shimmies from overstress. Most nose gear shimmies, if you really look at where the stress came, it's all tug induced. It's not bad pilots. The pilots that had shimmy, it wasn't you. It was your tug. Buy one of these. Shameless plug. So we started with auto throttles to protect the nose gear, but now we're like, well, where's the other damage? And we found out from the insurance company, the average hangar rash claim for the major operators, the average is $250,000 repair. One small underwriter that we work with averages eight claims a week at 250,000 average claim. At our own home airport in the last year, we had an aircraft moving back and the spotter was yelling, was going, no, you're good, you're good, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're good turned into whoa, turned into $1.2 million and that jet is AOG for 12 to 14 months. It's that quick. And so what we came up with is a new acronym because aviation needs more acronyms. And it's a new product called the ETSO, E-T-S-O, Emergency Tug, let me show it to you here. Emergency Tug Shutoff. So this is our indestructible little tug shutoff device. So the, um, it's a dead man switch. We call this the ETSO Wingman. So the Wingman, this can pair to any, any any new Best Tug commercial product will have the ability to pair, and we have a kit. Any Best Tug product that's out there right now, you can get a wire harness kit, relay, and the receiver, and put this onto your product now, just plug and play. But now what's happening is the airplane's pushing back, the wingman is kind of watching, and then starts waving, and then just hits the button. The insurance companies we were talking to, one of the insurance companies says, in the last five years, they've given away 60,000 whistles for line guys because they weren't getting enough attention saying whoa 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 and then all of a sudden it's like why didn't you stop well why didn't you say something i did say something why didn't you say something sooner why didn't you say it louder but it doesn't matter it's already a million dollars gone so now and then we did some fun studies on reaction times you know the average reaction time is almost a half second we walk at 4.2 feet per second a half second is two feet if you're already saying whoa by the time they, if, if you said whoa, and they immediately, as fast as human can react, the plane's already gone two more feet, right? But what's worse is what really happens in all these claims is that the guy driving the tug, someone says, whoa, they don't let off the throttle. They certainly don't slam the emergency stop. They look, they're like, what? And now you have another delay. So now if the line guy, if he's there and he's walking, he's like, whoa, 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 never mind, you weren't listening. And the tug operator's going, why'd you stop my tug? Because we can't afford you doing that again, is why. So that's our ETSO, and then we have a, a ETSO Wingman, and we have the ETSO Wingman XR for extended range. It has both extended batteries and twice the range. This is one that could sit in the office of an FBO, and he could be watching a plane move from upstairs and go, nope and just kill it. To reset it is just turn the knob and you've given power back to the operator. So that's our emergency stop. I'm convinced with what we're seeing in numbers and, and from time to time it breaks a billion in one year on claims from, from line guys and pushing aircraft back. I'm convinced that one device right there will save this industry millions of dollars starting immediately and that is all of your insurance rates. All of us pay for that. So that's the last of our products, guys. Our Etso Wingman, our new Bravo B4, our new larger commercial scrubber, our new best power supply, and our new attachments for our Alpha Tug. Thanks so much for being customers, guys. Thanks for all you do.